Alfred, is this thing on? I'm Batman. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm here to introduce uh, a very special show. It's called uh, Comic Book Shop Talk. Now, I know you probably wouldn't think that I would care about that. Damn it, Damien, I can't go five minutes without you throwing a batarang in my face! <sighs> that kid's worse than Jason. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to introduce the debut of a very special show, Comic Book Shop Talk. Now, this is technically a podcast, or as I like to call them, Batcasts. But, uh, I've added a few pretty pictures to make them visually interesting for all you lovely people. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Go! <sighs> Alfred, why the hell didn't they get Superman to do this intro? everyone welcome to the first episode of comic shop talk i'm dan i am mike and you've already screwed up dan uh it's comic book shop talk oh shit, shit yeah yeah listen uh i quit i quit that's the end of the show <laughs> well, that was fast uh, <laughs> that was fast man this is a this is a short-lived Good project. Run, everybody <laughs> that's a wrap everyone all right all right uh, <laughs> no, uh, no. Welcome, uh, welcome everyone to Comic Book Shop Talk. Uh, I, I'm Mike, and I'm Dan, and uh, and we are here to talk comics. Um, Dan, if you if you kind of want to go into um, why why we're here, why we're recording, I'd I'd love to hear it. Yeah. So basically, Mike and I both have listened to a lot of comic book podcasts. And we noticed a few recurring themes. One, they give away way too much information about things that are happening. So you have no reason to check it out yourself because you know the whole story. Next, they also have a tendency to just hate on everything. Oh, this sucks. That sucks. Because what I remember was better and we don't want to do that. Comics right now are entering a new golden age. We're getting amazing stories by absolutely incredible writers and artists. And we want to celebrate everything that comic books are. Uh, one character, team, or creator at a time. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I love it. Yeah, there, there are a lot of um, you know, YouTubers and podcasters out there um, and that, that, that talk comics. Um, and... Uh, you know, we're not saying that we hate on everybody. Um, you know, there, there are some people out there that I think that are, that are putting out some, uh, some good content. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we want to throw our hat into the ring. Um, and uh, we want to, we want to talk about comics um, from a place of, of love um, and admiration because we, we love these characters. Uh, we love these creators. And like Dan is saying, um, you know, we really are in a new golden age of comic books. Um, you know, we've we've been in that era, age, I'd say, since um, the late, very late '90s, early 2000s. Um, we 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 kind of entered into a new golden age. Not saying that there wasn't um, wasn't great books, you know, in, in the '90s, in the '80s, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's there's always been great comics, but. I think that there's just been this monumental shift in the types of stories that are being told um, in superhero comics, um, but also in uh, in in other um, genres of comic books as well. And and you know we're going to be talking about um, Marvel, DC, Image, you know Dark Horse, pretty much anything that that we're that we're interested in that that we're seeing that. Uh, you know, needs a needs a shout out, needs a spotlight. We're gonna want to talk about that. Um, you know, my preference. I'm I'm a DC guy. I love DC comics. Um, you know, but as far as I see it, the other purpose of this show is for us to kind of 
um, explore other titles that we might not normally explore um, in our in our just normal everyday um, readings. Um, so we're uh, we're working on a list of uh, of kind of what we want to cover, and we're gonna we're gonna go everywhere. We're gonna hit some of the you know the really big stuff. Like I think we're gonna cover um, you know the Infinity Gauntlet stuff uh, maybe in the next episode, but. You know, we want to dive deeper into some of the uh, the other um, kind of nichier stuff that uh, that people might not know about. Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of everything here. Exactly, we're gonna jump back and forth based on what we specifically want to talk about and are interested in, and on what's coming up. Um, once it gets a little closer, we're gonna talk about Dan Slots. Um, upcoming Fantastic Four run that we're both incredibly excited about. Yes. Um, along with the, you know, Scott Snyder's upcoming Hawkman. There's a lot of stuff coming up involving characters that are both well-known and obscure. And we want to make sure that there's an opportunity to, for us to discuss them and for anyone listening to learn about someone new. You know, you never know who your favorite character is going to be until you actually read about them. Yep, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing about about characters, uh, you know, the other thing that I'm interested in about this show is, is because we're approaching it character by character, um, you know, there are a lot of characters out there that people say, oh, I don't like this character um, because, uh, you know, he or she is boring. Um, and, and our argument is always there's no such thing as a boring character. Um, it's just that it's just the, the, the writer was boring or the writer wasn't telling a good enough story. Um, and so, um, you know, that kind of brings us um, into uh, into who we will be talking about today. Um, and that is uh, no other than the Man of Steel himself, Superman. Um, he is the, uh, the first superhero or at least the first superhero that matters. And so we're, we're going to be talking about him. I know a lot of people might say, uh, you know, oh, Superman is boring. Um, and, and again, we're here to say that no, Superman is not boring. Um, you just might've not read the right story for him. And so Dan and I hoped, um, in today's episode to kind of put a spotlight on some really, truly fantastic um, Superman stories, um, and um, and uh, we're I'm I'm excited. I can't wait to get into get into this topic. Same here. We're also going to be going into some teases about what's coming next. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis has left Marvel after the most some of the most seminal runs on any characters or teams that that company has. Yeah, he pretty uh, much he pretty much touched on everyone there. Yeah, and if, if you know Jessica Jones from the Netflix show, he created her. If you've heard about Miles Morales, the, the Black Spider-Man, he created him. Most of the Avengers stories that we know and love are all because of him. And he is about to take over writing The Man of Steel um, on the May 30th, which will be potentially change everything and give it and act as a great jump on point for new readers to give Superman a chance at becoming a character that they finally appreciate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I've got to say I, I am a little nervous about this only because I have been so in love with what DC has been doing recently uh, with uh, with Superman. Um, we are going to get into that um, towards the the end of the show. Um, but uh, I'm I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for Bendis. Um, but I'm also just a little bit worried because uh, I, I just I mean the Superman Rebirth era has been phenomenal. Um, but uh, but we will get into that uh, later. Um, uh, before that, though, what what do we have? Uh, what do we have uh, coming up first on the old uh, chopping block there, Dan? Well, the the schedule for this week. First, we're starting with Superman: American Alien. Right. Um, a recent story by Max Landis that focused on not Superman, but specifically Clark Kent, with each of the seven issues going 
era by era through his life, starting as a child, learning about kind of what his powers are and trying to learn to control them, all the way up through his first major supervillain fight and the time that he, the first time he actually saved the Earth. Okay, very cool. Um, and then uh, after that, I know we, we're going to be uh, touching on All-Star Superman, um, which uh, is, is to me, I mean, it is the ultimate Superman story. If you ever, if you, if you came up to me and you told me that you are only ever going to read one Superman comic book in your life, um, I would hands down tell you that you need to read All-Star Superman. Um, hell, if you said to me, yeah, and if you said to me, you might only read one comic book, period, in your life, the answer still might very well be All-Star Superman. It is that good. Yeah, it is the, in my opinion, the quintessential Superman story. Anything you, if you, it's a story that if someone has never heard of Superman, if someone's never even heard of superheroes before, you can read this understand who Superman is and understand exactly what superheroes are in a way that's going to make you both excited about what is out there and optimistic for the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and and, I mean, that's, I mean, you, you just, you just described Superman as as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, And after, after we get into that, we're going to be, that's when we're going to get into Superman rebirth um, and then a little bit of uh, on man of steel. Um, But before we get into all of that, why Superman, Dan, what, what is it that we like about Superman and why do we want to talk about him today? Well, in my opinion, like Superman is my all time favorite, like DC hero, possibly my favorite superhero of all time. There's a, I have a tendency to like some of the more obscure people, Sure, but there's two stories kind of to tell with Superman. Yeah. One that is not that great. And one that is some of the best comic book storytelling ever written. And it's specifically based on just the name. If you focus on the super aspect, that's when you get some of the complaints of like, oh, you know, he's boring. He has every power. He's unbeatable. There's no drama. You know, he's not relatable at all. Meanwhile, if you focus on the man aspect, you go, okay, well, you know, people who say he's not relatable, he's from middle America. I always felt like he doesn't belong. Got this gift and has spent his life trying to do the right thing with the lessons that were taught to him by his parents, which is something that I think anyone can relate to. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, You know, a lot of people, when they say that Superman isn't a a relatable character, like uh, the Rousseau brothers, um, you know, they're saying that, you know, Superman isn't relatable, DC characters aren't relatable. You know, to me, I say, well, you know, you just haven't read the right stories then because that's the only explanation that I can come up with um, simply because you're right. If you do focus on, uh, on the man and not the super uh, suddenly his character is is ripped wide open. um, And, uh, and it's some of the most um, touching and endearing um, stuff that I, that I've read um, is when they focus on his relationship with mom, Pa Kent, his relationship with Lana Lang, uh, and, and, and Lois, and, uh, you know, even Pete Ross and, and Jimmy Olsen and, and all of those types of characters. I, I mean, that's, that's, it's can be really, truly great stuff. And then, you know, that's not even touching on the wider DC universe. Um, because to me, for a long time, I, I would say Superman is best when he's uh, when he's around other heroes. And you know, I, I still think that's that that is that can be the case a lot of times because he's such a powerful, you know, kind of character that that can be overwhelming to others. And it's interesting to see kind of how he will turn down certain aspects of himself so he can you know work well with with, with other heroes. But but beyond that, I mean, I just, I love Superman. When I'm down in the dumps, I, I will often turn to a Superman comic just because he does, if done right, he does instill you with this amazing sense of hope uh, for the future. And, you know, just like in, in the Man of Steel movie, uh, you know, what does the S stand for? The S stands for hope. You know, that's probably one of the very few things that movie got right about Superman. 
Um, hmm. And uh, I can't think of, a, of, of another superhero character out there that, that does instill me with, with that much hope. And it's just, it's, it's, it's so true to the core of his character. And I think it's why he's, you know, he's been such a phenomenon and icon in, in America and around the world for, you know, for what, nearly 80 years now. Yeah. Actually, 80 as of a few weeks ago with uh, issue 1000 of Action Comics. That's right. That's right. Happy birthday, Superman. Um, well, uh, we're, we're obviously fans uh, of the character uh, on, on this show. So uh, why should you be, um, you know, if you're, if you're just getting into the character uh, for the first time, you know, what, what are the kind of books that, that you should be getting into um, that's what we uh, hope to discuss discuss today. Um, so, uh, Dan, do you do you want to get into our our first uh, our first graphic novel? Yeah. Um, so to start, we're going to get in. We're going to start with Superman: American Alien, a book that I feel more than any other comic focuses on the man side of things. It is about, it's the story of Clark Kent. Each issue focuses, like I said before, on a different point in his life. Um, issue one is his powers first manifesting. Um, a few issues later, it goes into him having trouble relating to people and all the way up through him as he gets more known as Superman, he starts having trouble even re even relating to the people who helped him come to terms with his powers in the first place, like his parents and Lana Lang and Pete Ross. Um, it's a story basically about the human experience. As we age, as we mature, as we go through changes in our lives, sometimes it becomes harder to relate to the things that we like grew to love and that helped nurture that. And it is it's played up to show that it can be even more difficult when you are literally a god among men. Yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, you know I I just reread this book uh, today. In fact, I, I really really love how Max Landis um, you know does put the focus on the man um, or the boy um, as the uh, as the series does start with uh, with a young Clark Kent um, growing up in in Smallville. Um, and it's interesting because they, they, he puts as much focus on uh, Ma and Pa as he does uh, on, on, on Superboy. And I love that because I love me some Ma and Pa. Give me all the Ma and Pa uh, stories that you got. Um, and, uh, you know, I, what I love is that they, they, he digs into kind of what, um, what Clark is feeling, um, the insecurities that he's feeling. Um, he thinks he's a monster. Um, and it also goes into the difficulties that Ma and Pa have in in raising a kid with uh, these incredible powers that are, um, you know, coming on uh, in these kind of awkward spurts, kind of like, you know, when, when we all hit puber puberty and stuff like that. I think that's kind of what he's trying to do here with his powers, which um, I think is, is fun and interesting. Um, and it's very touching and, and very emotional. And there are a lot of these touching moments throughout the entire book. And because Landis pays a very, very close attention to specifically how Clark uh, relates to the people around him. And it's just, it's a phenomenal, um, it's a phenomenal book to read. And it helps you to, to learn about Superman um, in, in, in ways that, I don't think every book captures, which is which is I think why we both really enjoy this book. Yeah, and it's and it also allows his each of the people in his life to fill in a specific role. So we have or in, like Ma and Pa are the ones who you know, obviously are are caring for him. Pete is the one who's like who honestly makes him feel those insecurities. Pete is cool, like He's the cool guy. He gets the girls. Like he gets a car before Clark does. Pete is what Clark Kent as a normal kid would be aspiring to be like. Meanwhile, his alienation is really felt through his relationship with Lana in a very believable way of the fact that everybody when you're that age, when you're like elementary, middle school, whatever, you may have a crush on somebody from time to time. And the 
fear of rejection keeps you from acting on it. And Lana is kind of representative of that idea of moving on with his life, of becoming something more and taking advantage of these gifts that have been bestowed upon him, of just that fear of not fitting in and not, you know, getting the girl as a metaphor for kind of achieving your goal. Right, right. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it, it's just interesting to see, <laughs> to see this character that I think we all do think of him as this, uh, as a Boy Scout, um, as this guy who, you know, who's got it all figured out. I mean, he's, he's Superman, he's bulletproof, he's, he's perfect, he's all these things. And so I love to see him be presented as anything but that in American Alien. I mean, he really is this guy who is full of insecurities, um, who thinks of himself as a monster. Um, and, you know, like everyone else, I mean, he needs reassurances. Um, he needs the people in his life to, to, to tell him, hey, dude, it's going to be all right. Like, you you just got to be you um and uh and it's interesting you know with the Pete Ross thing well actually before before I get into that i the other thing that i love about this um which is related to that is how he, you know landis presents all of these characters that not as not just a supporting cast but as these characters who really do shape the future of superman um you know you have Pete Ross who says you're so short sighted um, you don't know what you want to do. You're just kind of going out there and, and doing this this stuff without giving it much thought. Um, and, and and it's just interesting. He does that with a couple of different characters that kind of help Clark grow into the role of Superman along the way. I don't want to go into all of that stuff, um, but let's just say, you know, there are definitely guest appearances from some very famous um, DC characters um, outside of the Superman mythos. Um, and, and those are definitely um, a lot of fun that uh, they're, they're never expected when they come up. Yes. You just see somebody in the background who walks up, starts talking, and then you get a name and it's just it's like, oh, my God, I know that person. Right. It, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's, you know, Max Landis is, and I'm not going to get into this too much. Um, you know, Max Landis, I think is a guy, you know, he's a guy without some controversies um, in, in his career. Um, if, if anyone um, is unaware of his, of his, um, of his work, uh, I think I would argue he's most famous for Chronicle. Um, which is the the found footage uh, superhero movie. Um, Michael B. Jordan was in it. It was one of his very early roles, and um, or at least it, it was the first thing that I ever I I ever saw Michael B. Jordan in. Um, and it, it's it's kind of like a found footage meets Unbreakable type of film. It's a superhero origin movie. It is a fantastic movie. Very smartly written. Uh, Max Landis definitely showed that um, he was he was familiar with a lot of the superhero concepts and conceits, and so it's a lot of fun to see him go from you know an original creation um, into something uh, or someone as iconic as Superman. Um, and he's a very smart guy. Um, sometimes I think he's a little too smart for his own good, but um, hmm. he, he's very clever. Um, and, and a lot of that really shows um, in his um, in his efforts in in American Alien. Um, I mean, there's there's so much to highlight. Um, I mean, you get to see Clark as a as a as a teenager, um, kind of uh, confronting his first uh, you know quote unquote villains. Um, and uh, you know, should we give away kind of what what happens in that in his uh, first adventure there? Uh, yeah. Um, well, the, the first adventure that he has, and I'll be as spoiler free as possible, is that he hears about a, basically a robbery gone bad in Smallville, in which the several people who were there, uh, hostages of the robbery, end up getting shot and killed. The people in Smallville who know what Clark can do, 
want him to get involved. He, on the other hand, feels is torn between wanting to do what's right and wanting to just be a normal kid, not use his powers and just let the police handle it themselves. And then he ends up blowing uh, this guy's arms off with his heat vision. And when the first time he's ever tried to use them in combat, like <laughs> having no idea about limits. Right. It's very accidental. It's kind of, it's, it's more of a, um, an involuntary response because he's getting shot in the face with a shotgun. Uh, and this is kind of before his uh, invulnerability powers have really started to kick in. So instead of bullets flying off of him, um, he does get wounded. He just, he doesn't die as a result. He gets wounded um, and, uh, and he reacts by uh, using his heat vision and severing this guy's, both of his arms clean off um he ends up saving the day uh but it's just a very violent shocking um encounter that he has um and and the point of this what i love about this is that you know the point of this isn't to have a shocking ultra violent moment the point of this just like the point of everything that happens is in this book is to show you how 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 a young boy um grows up to be Superman. And so every little thing matters. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's really fantastic. I mean, some of the other highlights that I really love about this is Clark winning a trip to the Bahamas and ending up on a, on a, on a cruise ship, uh, pretending to be Bruce Wayne because, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne hasn't been seen uh, for, you know, since he was 12 years old and people just mistake him for Bruce and he goes along with it. He, uh, he, he parties it up. He drinks, he gets, you know, he drinks, he gets drunk, he meets a girl, he gets laid. I mean, this is really, really fun stuff that I just, I don't think that people would normally think about happening to Superman. Um, but it happens and it's wonderful. And it's just, it's a great deal of fun. And there's a lot of meaning behind this. And if you were ever wondering what, uh, what all the fuss is with Superman, um, this is an, this is a complete story. Um, it's told in over, uh, is it six or seven issues? Seven issues. Seven issues, and it's just wonderful. I cannot recommend this book enough. Oh, and and a side note: every book we bring up in this podcast are all in print and available at your local comic book store. If you go, if you like what you're hearing, go in, ask them. If they don't have it in stock, they're all things that are available through the primary distributor Diamond that supplies every comic book store in the country. Absolutely. That's a great point. Um, you know, we are, we are trying to, uh, you know, name drop books that are obviously in print um, because that is one of the difficulties sometimes when, when trying to read, trying to read comics is not only just finding the book, but you know, is it still in print and all, and all that kind of stuff. So um, we're definitely trying to highlight the stuff that you can uh, get your hands on. Um, so before, yeah. Before we move on, there is one other thing that I want to bring up with American alien oh, that, I love, which is just how much over several issues Superman, you know, we talk about all these people in his life shaping him, and we brought up, you know, all these characters from Smallville, but one person in particular, I think has a much bigger, or has their role grown considerably, and that's Lex Luthor. Everything from the name Superman to even his confidence in his ability to be this beacon of hope are all shaped specifically by early encounters with Lex Luthor before he ever is the Superman we know. Absolutely. Yeah. That, and that's, uh, you know, that's a very pivotal scene in the book. Um, you know, I think usually Lois is the one who's ascribed with, uh, with coining the phrase Superman or co coining the name of Superman. Um, it, but this is, um, you know, this is a, a slightly different tale um and uh and this time around the honors do go to lex um and of course it's uh brought up in a very derogatory way um and so you know clark using the name superman is, is all so that he can he can get underneath lex's skin um because let's just say uh in the first encounter between lex and superman lex definitely comes out on top i mean he Schools, Superman. It's oh. pretty embarrassing. It's not even a contest. It like, isn't. Lex, Lex wins by not even. I don't even think he 
does so much as taking a step. Yeah. It's just all a ver like battle of wits. Yep. That Lex just owns him. Absolutely. And so it's interesting, you know, because in this book, you know, Clark is presented uh, not as not as someone who's stupid, but just really, really very down to earth, very human, just like you, just like me. Like we're not sure what we want to do, you know, with our lives necessarily, and we're questioning everything. And you know, he comes across Lex Luthor, who is you know a, a wonderkind, and he's the CEO of a you know billion dollar company and um and he's obviously very smart um and he just makes an absolute fool of superman and uh it's interesting to see how super what superman's retort is and it's just yet another one of those things that that leads uh leads a man to become superman and it's it's a lot of fun to read and it is so just backhandedly kind i love it it yeah it's such a it's such a sweet thing to do but he does it with just that tinge of spite yeah that shows him to really just like we keep saying be a be a man be a person right absolutely um if you guys are uh, are interested please do yourselves a favor uh and, and pick up a copy of, of this book it is absolutely incredible um, Dan, do you have any any final words you want to say before we move on to the next book? No, just like uh, just like you said, go to your local comic shop, and if they don't have it in stock, ask them to order it. It's something that they can do, and usually either by the upcoming Wednesday or the Wednesday after that, you can have a copy in your hand. Right, and you know, Dan, something that uh, that we may want to talk about as well before we get into All Star Superman. Probably something that we should have started with uh, or, or got into in our introduction is uh, who the hell are we and, and why the hell are we talking about this and what is our experience um, with comics? Are, are we just fans? Are we just because that's enough for us to be fans. That's that's great. But um, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. I mean, in the end, I think that is the key factor. We are fans. We're not, you know, the typical, you know stereotype of the fanboy we are just two people who love comics sure um i have worked in comic book stores and working alongside um people in this industry um on and off since 2004 mm -hmm. um i have been going to comic conventions since i don't even know how long it's been years like I have been working at stores that have had signings from people like, you know, David Lloyd, who co-created V for Vendetta, to Jason Aaron, who is currently controlling the landscape of characters like Thor and the Avengers, to you know, Rick Remender, who a lot of people may know for Uncanny X-Force, but has at Image and Dark Horse doing his own independent books has done things like Deadly Class, which is actually going to be a show on sci-fi soon. Uh, the first trailer's out, and it looks incredible. To Low, and even his brand new series, Death or Glory. Awesome, awesome. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm also obviously a fan, um, and, I, and I have uh, some experience uh, working uh, at a comic book store as well. In fact, the very same one that, that, uh, that you work at. Um, we worked together for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's something that I think is, is definitely in our, in our blood. Um, we, we love these books. We love to support them. Um, and, and, and we're doing this because we want other people, we want more people to read comics. Um, and we're hoping we can grow this show, um, so that we can, uh, we can help to curate, um, you know, what it is that, that people are reading, help to show them the way because our experience, and I think everyone's experience with comics is you, you, you read one thing and it leads to another and another and another. And before you know it, you're, you are a hardcore comics fan and, uh, and you're just, you're just having a great time with it. Yeah. And one thing with, uh, that also goes into a lot of these suggestions is that we know that comic books, especially if you're just getting into them, can be a very intimidating process. Marvel has 
does dozens of books. DC has dozens of books. They cross over, they tie into each other. It's, it's not an easy thing. So we're also focusing on books that either ignore that entirely by being self-contained like Superman, American alien and like all-star Superman, like we're about to speak about yep. or books that are a jump on point where with Superman rebirth, like we'll be getting to a little later, you don't have to know anything about Superman in order to jump onto this. You don't have to be reading Batman or Wonder Woman or the flash. You can just read this and enjoy yourself. If you want to move on from there, and jump into some of these other characters, cool. If not, if you just decide you like this book and want to stick to that, also cool. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think that's something that we want to do in every in every episode is, is cover that cover um, you know, one or two books that are self-contained and uh one or two books that uh are are part of a series. Um and uh because they're they're both um worthy of your attention. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously one, one takes a little bit more dedication than the other. Um, so, uh, with that, let, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, all-star Superman. Now it has been a few years since I've read this, uh, read this book. Um, and, uh, it's, it's stuck with me. It's, it's, it's one of those, um, it's just one of those stories that become as iconic uh, as the the characters themselves, um, there has been um, besides the comic, there has been an animated adaptation, which is great. Um, but I'm shocked that um, we haven't heard about this, you know, potentially being adapted into uh, into like a a movie or or, or maybe such, or or live action interpretation, just because it's just so phenomenal. It's, it's something we may see now that Jeff Johns is the head man in charge of DC animated or DC live action movies. Right. He has a love of this iconic, optimistic beacon of hope Superman. So this really, I would not be surprised if uh, Man of Steel 2 takes some inspiration from books like this or even Jeff Johns' own work with the character. But um, for as a Basic rundown, Superman or All-Star Superman is a book in which in order to save a group of scientists in a space station that's orbiting the sun, Superman gets thrown into the sun fighting an alien. And, and a, a side effect of that is his body overloads on the yellow sunlight that gives him his powers, increasing all of his abilities. He's faster. He's stronger. He's sm even smarter, but he's also dying. He has a disease that's doing to him the same thing that cancer does to regular humans. And since he's the only Kryptonian left and this disease hasn't existed otherwise, it is him, his both attempts to find a cure and just in case he can't find one, his spending his last days with anyone who has ever been important to him in his life. Right. Pretty intense premise. <laughs> I mean, basically the book opens up with uh, Superman is awesome. And also he's dying. Um, what, yeah. is, what is he going to do with, with the, with his last, with his last days on earth, his last days of life. And uh, it's incredible. Um, I, you know, I, I really personally, I don't, I don't want to get, too too much into the details uh, of this particular book because I do think it's it's one that is better left up to for you know to keep up the surprises and, and to just experience everything for yourself firsthand. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a book that should be experienced. Yes, definitely. Um, and I, it's just the the stuff that this book is actually I don't know if we've mentioned this but this book is written by Grant Morrison um, with with art by Frank Quietly. Um, who they have uh, collaborated numerous times um, throughout their career together. Um, they uh, they worked on New X Men, which is uh, what got me into X Men comics. Uh, it, it is best as someone who has read X Men. I I literally learned to read on X Men comics. Yeah. It is the best X-Men run of all time. <laughs> Nothing that I read before that or have read since has topped it. Not that other things haven't been good. Sure. Like specifically some of the books that are happening now ever since Resurrection have been incredible. Mm -hmm. But as far as characterization, as far as scope, as far as just 
a single series that has forever changed the landscape of what X-Men are. Mm -hmm. Nothing has topped it. And this is these same two guys taking that same care and effort and putting it towards putting it towards Superman. And so what's great, the other thing that I love about this, um, like we said before, this is a self-contained story. So this isn't bound by continuity in any way. You can pick up this story um, having never read comics or Superman comics. And uh, and it is a complete story from uh, beginning, middle, and end. Um, it's got probably the best um, introduction of any anything ever, actually. Um, it is, uh, what is it, like, three panels, like three sentences, three panels, and it introduces everything you need to know about Superman. Right. <laughs> um, it, it's not, I wouldn't even call them sentences. I mean, I, I would say it's actually just one sentence, um, you know, with two commas uh, and a period. And it's just, it's literally everything that you need to know about Superman. Um, it's, uh, if you if you have no interest in Superman whatsoever, but you love a well-crafted story and you respect the art form itself, you have to read this book. Yeah, it's, without question. And even if you just have a passing interest, you know, he spends two issues with Lois Lane. He spends one issue with Ma and Pa Kent. He spends one issue with Lex Luthor. He spends one issue with Jimmy Olsen. And it introduces all of these characters and at the same time begins to explain who and what they are and what the relevance is in the context of him trying to keep secret the fact that he is there to say goodbye. Honestly, it is perfect. Oof, you just saying that is it was like a, 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 a punch to the gut, man. It is uh, it's. It's one of those stories, and it sounds like it, it would be full of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, darkness and dreariness, and and it's, it, you know, it's grim and gritty. It's none of those things. This is this is a Superman comic to its truest form. Um, it is light and bright and full of hope and love and uh, action and adventure and insane <laughs> concepts and it just, I mean, and it's, and it's even funny at a lot of oh, times. Yeah. Um, one particular thing that I don't think ruins anything by saying sure. is that the key to the Fortress of, the, of Solitude is kept under a rock on the front porch. It's a key made from condensed stars, so it's so heavy that no one else could pick it up. But it's the size of a regular key you'd have on your keychain, and sure. just for a goof, basically, to make it feel more normal— it's the spare key hidden under a rock, like so many families have done kind of throughout the history of, you know, modern society. Definitely. I mean, it's definitely something that uh, I would assume Ma and Pa Kent did, which is why he carries that over um, into his Fortress of Solitude. And it's just one of those, it's a great example of those, uh, those the small moments that, that are sprinkled throughout this book. This book that's full of huge ideas um, you know, still has plenty of room for those smaller character moments that are just uh, so much fun uh, and, and just creates this, just this incredible tapestry of, uh, of you know, one of the world's most endearing comic book characters. Um, and if, if you take anything away from this show today, read All-Star Superman. If you're only going to buy one comic book in your life, make it All-Star Superman. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, even if you don't typically like superhero comics or like I, you know, I prefer independent stuff. I want to stay away from the big two being Marvel and DC. Sure. It, it still works. Absolutely. It, still, it doesn't come across as part of anything bigger other than just kind of the epic grand scope of the story that it's trying to tell. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things about Grant Morrison is that he comes from. Um, more of an indie background. He was part of the uh, the British invasion in the 1980s, um, and so he um, he made a name for himself um, by being the indie guy working at uh, you know a big publisher um, like like DC, um, and uh, and and he's written just so many incredible works for DC Comics, but he's always done it with with his own style, his own quirkiness. I mean, this is a dude who believes that he is 
uh, a, a literal magician. Um, he does magic tricks. Um, I've done one of his magic tricks actually, and it totally works. I won't get into those details. Um, I'm, I, now I sound like a crazy person. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, he's just, he's, he is a character in and of himself and you just do yourselves a, a favor, read one of his books. Um, and, and you will, you will, you just won't be disappointed. It's impossible. Yeah. And if you're anyone out there is into video games, the story that uh, the Arkham Asylum games are based off of are actually, is actually one of his comics. There was a book he did, um, I believe in the mid nineties, if I'm remembering correctly, I believe so. Um, uh, that's just Joker takes over the asylum and Batman has to go in to save the guards and all the inmates, just like in the game and find out what the Joker's big plan is. The game definitely takes some liberties with the story. Of course. But but that is just showing the level of how iconic a lot of his stories are in yep. that they're now known by the general the general population outside of even comic books. Right. Um, so if you if you want to read a Batman story, a little bonus tip, definitely um, go out and get Arkham Asylum by by Grant Morrison. Um, it's insane. I mean, it really is. Literally, it, it is insane. So, um, <laughs> so w- with that, Dan, I think uh, I think we need to take a little break, and uh, when we come back, we will be talking about Superman Rebirth and uh, finishing up our show with uh, a little tease about Man of Steel. Oh, uh, you're still here. Hmm. Your attention span is impressive. Well, anyway, the guys also asked me to help them out with their sponsor segment. It's been a little quiet on the streets of Gotham lately. With that being said, today's sponsor is, uh, let's see, uh, Ace Chemicals. Alfred? I thought you vetted these sponsors! <sighs> so if you need chemicals, call Ace today. Just don't fall into one of their vats. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Thank you once again for listening. Dan and I really appreciate it. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to finish things up. We're going to get right into it um, with our uh, with our discussion of Superman Rebirth. I know now we've moved into the incontinuity. Yes, canon Superman. It's still a jump on point, but whereas these other stories have been kind of timeless, non-canon, iconic stories. This is one that you can use to then jump into what's happening in the rest of the DC universe. Right. It is a part of the uh, DC Universe uh, Rebirth Initiative. Um, What is that, Mike? Well, uh, DC Rebirth um, is is one of the more uh, recent and relevant publishing initiatives um, at DC Comics. Um, if any of you are familiar with the New 52, the New 52 was a reboot that uh, took the characters back several years. They made everyone roughly 25 years old, um, at least the, the main um, you know, A-list level uh, of heroes. So like your, your Justice Leaguers, your Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, et cetera. Um, made them all younger, more inexperienced. Uh, try, they tried to modernize them, basically. Um, you, might, you might recall Superman's costume having that armored look with, uh, with a collar and everything like that. Long story short, this was not a very popular reboot. Um, people um, like myself uh, really um, didn't like that uh, they, you know, kind of um, got rid of a lot of uh, fan favorite characters and, um, you know, kind of fractured the DC universe back into separate books. Um, as opposed to having this feeling that, you know, Batman, Superman, all these characters kind of coexisted together. Um, a lot of the New 52 style books, they were very disconnected from one another. 
Um, and even though you had books like Justice League where you had characters um, interacting with one another, it, it didn't really carry over into the rest of the New, new 52 line. Um, and so you had this, 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 this sense that so much was taken away from these characters. Um, relationships were taken away from these characters. Um, and, and just the overall, you know, um, kind of feeling of hope um, that that I get whenever I I think about the DC universe, um, you know, I think about this is this is the universe where where heroes are are lighter and brighter, um, where you know Superman leads the way um, and really you know helps to give not just the citizens of Metropolis you know a feeling of hope, but um, his fellow heroes. Um, and so all of this was taken away, and Superman was turned into kind of a what would you say, Dan? He had kind of a more, kind of had more attitude. Was a little bit meaner. He, he was he was a much more cynical, I'd say, character, which can work really well for certain characters. You know, mm -hmm. you want Wolverine to be a cynic. You want Batman to be a cynic. Not so much with Superman. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Um, and and so you know, it ultimately it just didn't work. It lasted for about um, five or six years. And look, here's the thing: there were a lot of New Fifty Two had a very rough start. I think a lot of writers were were really thrown off of their game because of how different um, the the universe became as a result of the New Fifty Two. Um, and and so it had a very rough start. I think they. I think honestly they all recovered pretty well um, within about two years uh, of the new 52. And, and, and oh, yeah, yeah. As far as the, the, the level, the quality of the stories that were being told, I think there was a lot of great stuff to be found in the new 52, but I think the problem ultimately was that, you know, people really, they, they just missed um, the way things used to be, at least in terms of, of the relationships that the characters had with one another, the interconnectedness of the universe itself. Um, and so DC Universe Rebirth was, uh, was basically uh, the answer to those complaints. And so um, in DC Universe Rebirth, we discover that um, the, new, the New 52 was not an accident at all. And in fact, um, someone actually stole 10 years of time, um, just ripped it right out of the DC universe. And as a result, um, uh, the relationships that they had, um, you know, developed over the years, all those things were gone. Essentially, not only were te was 10 years ripped out of the DC universe, but love itself was ripped out. Um, and it turns out that this, uh, this was the machination um, of a very famous character that is uh, actually not normally associated with the DCU. Do you care to, to reveal who that is? Um, I'm going to say no for right now. Mm. Um, just, Keep it mysterious. If anyone wants to know, read the Rebirth one shot. It's a single self-contained issue that was a jump on point for the entire DC universe. Um, it is a character that was published by DC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, they have never been connected or had anything to do with DC Comics before this. It is a very, very fun reveal that opens up possibilities that comic fans are still debating two and a half years later. Yep. Uh, I love it, Dan. Always a salesman. I I appreciate that. Um, so we will not get into that particular mystery, but uh, we will get into uh, some some details on Superman Rebirth. Um, and so um, broad scope, um, you know, Superman is one of those characters that I think um, a lot of people will call a Boy Scout. Um, and he's kind of uh, he's kind of the father figure of the DCU. And I think sometimes, uh, you know writers get into trouble when they when they uh, don't own up to that fact. Um, and in fact, uh, P Peter Tomasi um, fully embraces that with Superman Rebirth um, by uh, making that, uh, you know, that sense that Superman is a father and, and, and making that literal 
Um, and so we're actually introduced to uh, Man of Steel, who is uh, once again uh, married to Lois Lane, um, because in the New 52, uh, like I said, love was erased, and so was the marriage between, the longtime marriage between uh, Lois and Clark. Um, and so uh, one of the very first things that Superman Rebirth does is they remedy that and uh and we discover that uh superman or excuse me that lois and clark are in fact married again and not only that but they have a son uh jonathan kent is the uh i the i think the first um probably in continuity uh legitimate son uh, of lois and clark um, they've kind of flirted with that, with that idea, with that concept before. Jeff Johns had Chris Kent, who turned out to be the son of Zod. Um, and so this is actually, uh, you know, the first legitimate incontinuity. And maybe I'm wrong about that. You know, comics are crazy. Lots of stuff has happened over the course of 80 <laughs> years. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is the one that matters. Um, Jonathan Kent. And so uh, awesome, because Tomasi... Tomasi had a lot to deal with, um, with, uh, with Superman Rebirth. Um, you know, some characters, you know, like Batman, um, they had a few continuity issues with, uh, with the new 52 where, you know, he had like five or six different Robins and we were expected to believe it happened in a very short amount of time, much shorter than, um, than the time he was given, uh, you know, previous. Yeah, Five years, I think it was supposed to be. Five years, he had some six Robins somehow. Like it, it just, you know, it was very strange. And there are reasons for why they had to kind of keep hold of, of a lot of hit, a lot more of Batman's continuity than a lot of the other characters, you know, because if you think about Green Arrow, I mean, all of his continuity tossed out the window they they pretty much started him back up from scratch where he was kind of a douchebag rich billionaire playboy again and we had this and we got to see his journey from that into you know back to kind of what we expect him to be but for batman and green lantern they kept a lot of their continuity um you know because they had very popular books at that time that and they basically just decided look this is making us too much money we're not really going to reboot this um which was part of the problem with the new 52 was that they were willing to um take away so much um but they they didn't go all the way with it causing some weird continuity stuff but um with superman in particular um you know we had essentially prior to this to the, to superman rebirth um volume 1 which is the book that we're talking about superman rebirth volume 1 um you had a essentially two different versions of Superman. You had the New 52 version of Superman, and then it was also discovered that the pre-New 52 version of Superman was somehow still alive and living in the New 52 version of Earth. Um, and now it wasn't just him, but he his version of Lois was still around, and so they were actually still married uh, and had the kid. So the revelation was that when the DC Universe rebooted, they actually survived. Um, and uh, there's all sorts of reasons for that. We won't go into that um, for now. Maybe maybe we can get into, uh, ooh. Uh, uh, that's that's going to be... That's going to be that would be an episode in and of itself. Oh, yeah, but absolutely. Es but essentially what you need to know is this is the kind of... When you think Superman, this is the version of Superman that had survived. And he, Lois, and their son had been living for seven years worth of time in the New 52 in the background. They right. kind of decided this isn't our world. It has its own version of Superman. It has its own version of Lois. We're retiring. Right. They bought a farm in California, and they just lived on that farm separate from the entire rest of the DC universe, not even letting any of the other heroes or anything know they were alive. 
absolutely. He was he was operating in secret. Um, he's still Superman, of course. And even though he didn't want to drastically alter the course of events of, of this new world, um, he wasn't about to just sit back and, and let bad things happen. Um, so it was revealed that he'd actually been in secret operation. He has this badass black suit and he grew out this terrific beard. Man, Superman looks great in a beard. I wish he would keep his beard more up because he always looks badass. Yeah, he- He's the John Krasinski of superheroes. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. That's good. That is good. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, the point of this is that Superman Rebirth had a lot of baggage um, to kind of um, deal with. Um, and so I, I don't want you, I don't want that to scare you off because what Tomasi does is he very cleverly, he doesn't shy away from any of that stuff. And he very cleverly and very clearly explains kind of what had happened and uh, sets things up so that the audience knows that, you know, the, you know, the, the new 52 Superman is gone and that uh, the, the world of tomorrow needs a Superman. So it very quickly kind of repositions itself to focus on um, th- this, you know, this current version of Superman. I'm going to refer to him as, as, as the rebirth version of Superman. Um, and uh, it, it's just, it's a fantastic book. It grounds itself with the family and uh, gives us a very, very um, endearing uh, family to follow. Uh, Lois and Clark uh, turns out that they are terrific parents um, and they are struggling very similarly to um, uh, to how Ma and Pa Kent struggled with young Clark um, when he was developing his powers. Of course, the be- the biggest difference is that we have um, we have parents who uh, one, you know, who is, one is Superman and the other, Lois, has uh, has very experienced with living in a world um, with with Superman and with other superheroes. So they have a lot more of that type of experience um, to to kind of uh, guide a young uh, a young Jonathan Kent, uh, aka spoilers, Superboy. Um, and uh, it's it's just it's really, really great to to get to see this side of Superman again, this this very supportive father-like figure um, who is now literally a father, but in the context of, you know, kind of rebuilding their lives kind of from the ground up. Um, and so uh, this this opening volume of Superman Rebirth um, gives you uh, a lot of that great uh, foundational stuff with the super family. Um, and, uh, and it also, um, you know, gives us the introduction uh, of, a, of, a, of a brand new character, a, a kid no less, um, which, you know, whenever you introduce a kid into a franchise, a lot of times it's not seen as a very good thing and it's not handled very well. Fortunately, um, in this case, Tomasi's introduction of Jonathan is, I mean, it's flawless. Yeah, and the a few parts of it that really stand out to me, again, avoiding spoilers, is seeing, A, seeing Jonathan Kent kind of like trying to learn to control his powers. Because similar to Superman and what we were talking about with American Alien, when his powers develop, start developing, he has no idea how to control them. If he tries to use, let's say, the heat vision, it may just feel a little warm, or it may incinerate everything in in front of him, and he may not even have meant to use it. It may have just happened due to stress or adrenaline or whatever. So seeing like Superman now know the deal, and at the same time, like know kind of what the what powers are going to develop. But at the same time, being legitimately concerned in that the world is a very different place than when he was when he was first starting out and seeing how people who may overhear them or may see something can then communicate it. It's a very modern take on it. And the relationship between the Kent and John is almost this. Tomasi manages to do something very smart and that he takes 
having a kid and having a kid go through changes, whether that be puberty or just even getting used to having a kid in general, and he mashes all of that together to show a young kid getting used to the world, but at the same time going through these physical changes and his family having to react to them. It was done in a very smart, very, 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 very fun, very relatable way, especially without deviating too far off topic when you get into future volumes and he ends up meeting when he ends up meeting robin and making some friends with regular kids the way that it's handled is just so well done and in a way that you you kind of can't help but root for them right absolutely And, and you know it's it's interesting because you know we are essentially following um you know the version of of lois and clark that were thought dead, were thought, you know, erased from history. Um, and so I think on that level, there's this there's this um, kind of relief to see them in action again and to see how they've grown and evolved. But at the same time, you don't really need any background um, to, to appreciate this because of how cleverly, like you said, how cleverly Tomasi handles um, their characterizations and the differences, um, you know, between the, the, you know, the, the version of Earth that he's familiar with and the version of Earth that he lives in now. Um, and so there are differences. And, and that even bleeds over into the villains that he faces um, in, in, this, or in this volume. Um, you know, it's a villain that old school Superman fans would be familiar with, um, but it's, it, there are tweaks to it because this world is different. Um, and, uh, and, and at the same time, the other interesting thing about this is that for as far as the New 52 changed things, Rebirth is partially about returning back to what was before, but in a way that still incorporates and celebrates the elements that worked in the New 52. And so it's a really great, if you're interested in Rebirth um, and if you're interested in Superman, this is a really great place to start um, because uh, Superman is a very pivotal character when it comes to rebirth. Um, and, uh, and a lot of the rebirth stuff that's still playing out, um, and uh, we're, we're gonna see the conclusion of that within the next few months, um, but this is a great place to start. Um, essentially, Superman Rebirth is, if you, want to, if you want to know what's going on currently in the DC Universe, DC Universe Rebirth Special and Superman Rebirth Volume 1 is your best place to start. Yes, and like we said before, where this is a fresh jump on point, um, I do want to stress this is completely accessible to everyone. Even though it's the classic version of Superman and Lois, it has been seven years of continuity since the last time we saw them. Like with anybody, a lot has happened in seven years and you can't be expected to just jump right into it. And it doesn't spend all this time backtracking and like, hey, remember this thing from a story 30 years ago? Well, here it is now. No, it's they've lived in this world for seven years, they've gotten used to it and they're prepared to just you know make the best of their lives here and now while being in a fun, like Mike pointed out before, the father figure to the other heroes, he now is in a different way also because he's also older than all of the other DC heroes. Right. Um, and so there, there's a lot of interesting interplay with with that perspective. You know, someone who is more experienced than the other heroes all of a sudden, um, you know, because they know that he's a different he's a different Superman. Um, and, and so the other interesting thing with this series, if you do get into it, you'll see how they very cleverly kind of resolve all of those things. Um, and, uh, and so I wouldn't, um, if you're concerned about, oh, you know, there's just so much continuity, they, one great thing about comics and the one great thing about how this particular book is handled is they hold your hand through it. Um, and they don't rely on a person's knowledge of previous Superman stories to make this story 
interesting or entertaining. It's all, uh, like Dan said, it's a great jumping on point. So if you're looking, if you're looking to read current stuff, um, definitely pick, pick it up with, uh, with Superman Rebirth um, because it is, it is one of the best Superman stories in a long time. Absolutely love it. Um, and it's, to me, with, with the new, um, you know, Bendis, Man of Steel coming up, and we're going to talk about that to, to end the show, but to me, it's, it is a great transition um, into, into Man of Steel because you get a nice little kind of introduction to who Superman is today uh, before Bendis comes in and undoubtedly uh, turns his world completely upside down. Yes. And that actually is a good segue into uh, Man of Steel because there are two, we don't know much right now, but there are two stories that have come out, one in Action Comics 1000 and one in the DC Universe Zero slash semi-free comic book day issue for this year. Okay. In Action Comics 1000, we got a short story at the end where this alien creature that we've never seen before, this just giant monstrosity, is beating the hell out of Superman and Supergirl and Crypto. So he is, he is strong. He is a threat. Mm-hmm. And as he's beating up Superman, he is talking about how he destroyed Krypton. He is here to kill the last Kryptonians because... He it's his job to wipe out the virus that is Krypton. And therefore, after destroying the planet and finding out that three of them managed to survive, he's here to rectify that. Now, that throws all of Superman's continuity on its head. Is this guy telling the truth? Is he lying? Is he just trying to make Superman mad? Obviously, there's going to be more to it. But this is a huge potential change that opens the door to a lot of brand new storytelling for Superman. Right. I, I kind of uh, opened the show with saying that I'm a, I am a little uh, concerned with, um, with what Bendis is going to do uh, to Superman, um, you know, because I've loved so much what, um, what they've done with him in the rebirth era um, you know, and the other, the other part of me is, is concerned because, you know, this is Bendis coming into the DCU for the first time ever. And I can imagine that, you know, the version of Superman that he wants to write is probably a much more classic interpretation of the character. Um, and so part of my concern is, well, that means that we have probably a care, uh, you know, a version of Superman that isn't a father. Um, you know, that isn't even necessarily married. Um, and there have been some some rumors out there that they're going to, uh, you know, uh, that the, the marriage of Lois and Clark is, is going to be erased yet again. Um, you know, fortunately, some DC uh, folks in, in, in the uh, high up in the publishing sphere have uh, said, no, that's completely untrue. Um, and, and, and I'm really hoping it is. Um, but, you know, Bendis is an amazing writer. And so I, I'm, a, I'm torn because even though I love this version of Superman and I think it's a really truthful, honest portrayal of the character that just feels so right. Um, at the same time, you know, Bendis is such a great writer. I, I don't want there to be anything that um, kind of gets in his way, um, you know, kind of on an editorial level. Um, I really want him to tell the strongest Superman story that he can, um, because, I mean, he's proven time and again um, that, uh, you know, that he's a great storyteller and that he's told some really, truly, um, some of the most iconic runs uh, 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 over the last few years of Marvel characters. And, uh, I mean, I'm, even though I'm a little worried, I'm also extremely excited to see what he can do for Superman. Yeah, ag- agreed. Um, I was reading something a little earlier today, actually, where he described Superman, at, his process to writing Superman as half Spider-Man, which he has, with Ultimate Spider-Man, written some of, some of the best Spider-Man stories of all time. But crossing that with 
Moses, the biblical story, which is weird. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't think. I can't think of any possibility of those two stories working. Right. But at the same time, I feel like there's. If anyone can make that work, it's him. Right. Um, the other bit of story we've gotten from the DC Universe Zero or DC Nation Zero uh, one shot is Clark in the Daily Planet tr- with Perry White talking about the fact that Lois no longer works for the company. Ah, um, interesting. Clark is. Clark is offered her corner office, Whoa. but re- but declines it. Um, Lois has left to write a book. We don't know anything beyond that, huh. but some of Superman's dialogue hints that he might not even know where she is, that she might be missing. Wow. And then on top of that, there's a new woman who's been hired um, onto the planet to take Lois's place. She comes from, um, if I remember correctly, Central City. She's moved over to Metropolis. She's a very highly regarded reporter that has a lot of potential to put the Daily Planet like on the map in the same way that Lois and Clark did in their early days. Oh boy. But we have also seen that she... But A, she knows Clark Kent's writing and is a huge fan of it. But also she has, she's working for someone else behind the scenes. And we don't necessarily know who that is yet. Lex Luthor. Um, probably. <laughs> but we don't know because also in Rebirth, Lex Luthor has actually been a very close ally to Superman. He, he, has. he is a, They have become not even friendly, they have become friends. Right. And so we are now moving forward in this direction of who could who could this be that she works for and what are they trying to accomplish? We know they sent her to get a job at the Daily Planet. Mm-hmm. Is that to get close to someone else there, Clark Kent, or maybe get a maybe it's someone who's trying to stop Lois's book? Maybe it is someone who's trying to take down the planet as a whole, like a competitor. Maybe it's someone who knows Clark Kent is Superman. We don't know. And all of this is up in the air, but there's a lot of, as I said before, there's a lot of potential for some new and very cool storytelling that really looks into this as DC moves forward. We've seen how Superman, what Superman represents to the DC universe and this is an opportunity to kind of see the opposite of that. This is an opportunity from what they've been, from what I've gathered to see kind of what the DC universe as a whole and all of its parts represents to Superman. And that's something that has a lot of, yeah, it can be a very, very cool yeah, story. Yeah, no, that sounds, uh, that sounds interesting. Uh, you're much more well-read on, on the Man of Steel stuff than I am at this point. Um, I, I, I like to come into stories, uh, you know, fresher and, and, and spoiler-free, but um, that is very, very, very interesting. Um, I love that perspective. I mean, if that's the premise, what does, you know, what does the DCU mean to Superman? I mean, that's, that's a hell of a, hell of a premise right there. Um and uh yeah i'm i mean i'm i'm excited i'm excited um you know i can you know the tone in my voice says i'm also a little hesitant um but uh but that uh you know that's something that i that i'm i'm like 99.99999% sure are are, are fears that are going to be completely unfounded um because i mean it's bendis it's bendis bendis is coming um and uh it's going to be really uh it's going to be some really exciting times in the DC universe um you know we are we are on the verge we're shifting kind of into the 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 new the newer um uh you know publishing initiative um as rebirth is, is starting to close out um you know we're moving forward um with uh with Scott Snyder taking up uh Justice League um really curious about his take of Superman, you know, every, you know, every time he's written Superman, it's been great. Um, and, uh, and now we've got, um, you know, Bendis coming in, um, with, uh, with the main Superman series. Um, and 
I mean, I, I couldn't be more thrilled to for, for what's coming next. Yes, and for, for everyone listening, Man of Steel has not started yet. And the stories that I summarized already from Action Comics and DC Nation are, if you can find them, great, but they won't be necessary for the story. They're small, short backup stories. Man of Steel itself starts on May 30th and will be a weekly five or six issue miniseries leading directly into the new Superman title. Yes, absolutely. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to hit up your local comic shop. Um, let them know. Um, and, uh, and, and if you, if you decide to pick it up, I hope you enjoy it. And if you already have a subscription at your local comic shop, make sure that if you are interested, you add it to your subscription list. This is something they can add for just one issue at a time. But you adding it to your list also make sure that they know how many to order so that you don't potentially miss out on something you're excited for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Dan, uh, unless there's, there's anything else you'd like to add, um, I, I think, uh, I think that makes for a good stopping point. I had a blast. This was great. Yeah, this was fun. Um, unrelated to comic books, but, um, grocery stores now have Krypton cookie dough, a Superman ice cream flavor. I ate some on the break, actually, and it was delicious. Oh, well, that's good news. Uh, that, uh, that is amazing. I don't recommend Superman eating that, though. It seems like it would literally kill him. It's not kryptonite. It's just Krypton. Oh, that's confusing. I would still recommend that he stay away from that just in case. Yes, Superman, if you are listening to this, um, first up, hi, and thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we love you. We, we, hope, we hope you enjoyed this. And um, tell tell Batman uh, what's up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, all right, um, yeah. But, but uh, no, go ahead. But also, yeah. don't eat this yeah, ice cream. Also, don't eat that. Say hi to say hi to Batman. Uh, and also, uh, 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 don't eat the ice cream. And uh, don't don't be worried that two citizens know all of your deepest darkest secrets. It's fine. Yeah, we won't tell anyone except the people who are also listening to this. Okay, so we may have messed up. We may up. have Sorry. screwed up. Uh, please, please don't uh, go injustice on us and, and rip out our hearts. That would be bad. But injustice, if you don't know about but injustice, it, that's something we may get into in a future Absolutely, because it, while, it, while it's terrible, it's also extremely entertaining. Uh, so maybe that is something worth getting into. Um, at a later episode. In fact, that we will. We absolutely will. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, Dan, uh, I had a great time. I'm looking forward to uh, to the next episode, and uh, you know, I hope our listeners are too. Yeah, same here. Um, if you like it, let us know. Um, but yeah, let us know. Um, if, if we, you know, let us know what books you're into currently. Let us know if you're, you know, if you're currently into Superman. What are your favorite books? Um, and also. What uh, what other characters are you interested in us covering? Um, let us know uh, in in the comments uh, wherever uh, comments might be available for you to leave. Yes, um, and we'll see you next week when we talk all about Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet. Ooh, that is gonna be uh, that's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a snappy episode. <laughs> all right, sounds great, man. I will uh, I will talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Later.